I'm so excited to have today a long, lifelong friend of mine, Rick Osborne, on this interview. He's written, oh, I don't know if this is his second or third book by now. Let me think. Rick, how many books have you written? <laughs> uh, it's somewhere over 60 that I've written or co-written books. Yeah, 62, 63 books, but who's counting? But <laughs> he's a best-selling author with over 10 million copies of his books sold. An amazing man of God, writes for adult audiences, and he teaches them how to parent. He writes for children's audiences so the parents know how to teach their children. They have something to teach them with. He writes incredible books, and I'm thrilled to have him with me uh, today for a quick interview just to find out about his latest project. He wrote a book called Twas the Night Before the Very First Christmas. Rick, you got to tell me what's behind this book and why did you write it? Well, first, first I have to say, Michael, it's it's great to be here. I'm I, I always love hanging out with you, whether we're 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 taping it or just hanging out. <laughs> Either way, I love hanging out with you, my friend. Mm -hmm. um, amazing man of God, and I just I I love being with you. Um, th this book, "Twas the Night Before the Very First Christmas," the the nuts and bolts of the story is we have this poem that we all know and some of us love or have grown up with and everything like that and it's twas the night before christmas and it's all about santa claus and the reindeer and you know stockings and the fire and you know the santa claus all this kind of stuff but there's no mention of the baby jesus and in some ways that story has taken our culture for those who have gotten away from the biblical story the birth of jesus that has that story has given us something else to go to, right? To focus on. It's all about the Santa Claus and the night before Christmas. Here's the problem with that that I discovered when I was doing research. The man who wrote that, Clement Clark Moore, in 1822, he was a devout Christian all of his life. He was a pastor. He was a theologian. He taught other people, even the Hebrew and the Greek languages. When he wrote this book, when he wrote that poem, he said he wrote it as a, a bit of fun for his kids. And he read it on Christmas night. But then he got back to what Christmas was all about with his family on Christmas morning and the story of Jesus. And when I found that out, I thought, OK, we got to fix this, because if Clement Clark Moore found out what we had done with his poem in our society, he, I, I know he's not in his grave, but by way of speaking, the, <laughs> the saying is he would have rolled over in his grave. Right. So this book helps to honor his original intent. And I'm super excited about it. Well, you got to you got to elaborate on his original intent, because um was he talking about Santa Claus? And I, I don't understand this thing. Uh, what was he talking about when he wrote that poem? Well, he, well here's the thing. We, we, we think that Santa Claus is a fictional character. The word Santa Claus came from the Dutch community or the community from the Netherlands in New York that still spoke Dutch. And St. Nicholas, to say it in that language, it's... Saint Nicholas, which who was a real saint, a real man of God, who yes. knew, who was known for giving to children, um, it's Sinter Claus, Claus being Nicholas and Sinter being saint, and it got morphed in the English language to being Santa Claus, but it always was in the poems Clement Clark Moore wrote about. It always was about Saint Nicholas, right? The okay. poem isn't about. Santa Claus, if you read it again, it's about St. Nicholas, who was a real Christian saint, a man who spent his whole life serving God. Well, when, 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 when do they celebrate St. Nicholas? Is that on December 25th? Well, here's the thing. Back in 1822, no. Huh. Um, what was happening was some people celebrated Christmas on December 25th in okay. New York. It, it wasn't a federal holiday yet in, in wouldn't be for years in the United States, but a lot of people celebrated it. But a lot of people, especially the people from the, the new Amsterdam community celebrated St. Nicholas day, which was on December 6th. So December 6th, they celebrated St. Nicholas day where St. Nicholas came and, you know, visited the homes and for good little children, put ca candies and treats and stuff like that, as the tradition goes, in their in their um, stockings or in their shoes. 
right? So St. Nicholas Day had nothing to do with Christmas or the birth of Jesus. But on the 25th, everybody celebrated in that community in New York then, not everybody, but a lot of people celebrated Christmas Day, the birth of Jesus. So what Clement Clark Moore had done, because his family also had roots in, in the Dutch community, yep. and he had friends there as well. What he did was he wrote a really positive poem honoring St. Nicholas and St. Nicholas Day in that tradition. But he brought it into Christmas Eve for something fun for his kids. So he's focused on Christmas, but this was something fun to read about and talk about. So his kids also got treats and candies in their shoes and their stockings and stuff like that. But he didn't mean it to take over Christmas once that little thing was done. I mean, yeah. Christmas morning was all about Jesus. It wasn't about St. Nicholas or Santa Claus. Gotcha. Okay. So now that's a that's a very interesting story and, and one that most people don't know. And so you what you're trying to do, tell us about this, your your motivation here. You're 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 doing something called Operation Take Back Christmas. This is not your first Christmas book, I don't think. No, 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 no. Um, I did two Christmas books. The Legend of the Christmas Tree and The Legend of the Christmas Stocking. And I went back and did all this research and found where the Christmas tree, the roots of the Christmas tree, where it really came from, and the Christmas stocking as well, and found a way and saw the Spirit of God's fingerprints in that history, bringing it up to today, and found a way to tell a story to kids that helped bring what the Christmas tree is and what the Christmas talking is back to the true meaning of Christmas, which is Jesus. Those books focus on the true meaning of Christmas. And that's why I did them. Operation Take Back Christmas. Mm -hmm. It shows how the different trappings that we have. And we sometimes, eh, what are we doing this for? Actually tell the story of the birth of Jesus Christ. And those books have done exactly that. Operation Take Back Christmas. They've the books, I think is somewhere, somewhere close to 2 million copies sold of those books. Wow. So, wow. and I think I'm behind with the numbers. <laughs> so the families have taken them and every year they have that tradition where they decorate their Christmas tree and read this book and stuff like that at, in a way that focuses on Jesus and the same thing with the stockings. So this is what I want to do again with this third book, because yeah. this is just a whole lot of fun. And it brings the focus back and honors Clement Clark's Moore, Moore's original intent. Wow. So that's that's phenomenal. So this whole idea, what you're doing, what your ministry is, as I'm hearing you describe it, is I'm trying to restore truth. In this particular case, you're trying to restore the public understanding and awareness of the real meaning of Christmas and to bring Christmas back and to push back, in essence, some of the, the fairy tales, if you will, and to say, no, 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 let's take Christmas back. It is the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. And these books that you've done, including this one, especially now, this new one, which I think people have got to get. I mean, millions of people apparently have already got the other two. This one is the the, the, the whipping cream on top of it. Maybe next year you'll have a cherry on top of that. We'll see. <laughs> but, but this year you're putting that whipped cream on it. And I think that is amazing. So tell me, where are people going to get this book? And tell me a little bit about, before you do that, tell me about the illustrations. Like, what does this book look like? Can you give me some idea it, on that? Let me, let, me, let me first tell you sort of the, the, the nut of the book. This is the prequel to Clement Clark Moore's poem. Ah. In other words, if he was alive today and he knew what was happening with his poem, he would want to write another poem to respond ah. to the true meaning, what the true meaning of Christmas was. So... Yes. He wrote, he wrote, "Twas the night before Christmas." This book is "Twas the night before the very first uh -huh. Christmas." Yes, yes, yes. So instead of instead of it's written in the same kind of style and the same beautiful poetry and the 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 uh -huh. fun language of the original, mm -hmm. but instead of it being about the you know some some guy you know waking up and hearing the you know there being no noise and it's all quiet and they're all tucked in and all of a sudden he hears the clatter of reindeer and everything on his roof, right? Yeah. What he does is the same thing. Quiet night in the Bethlehem in told from the this is told from the perspective of the man who owned and run ran the Bethlehem Inn that was full and had to put Jesus had to put sorry Mary and Joseph in the stable so he wakes up to the clatter 
of all the shepherds arriving and rejoicing, all the shepherds arriving and rejoicing because they were sent by the (laughs) angels in his stable. Like, what's all the noise going on in the stable? I mean, I know Joseph are out there and what's going on? So it's this exciting story of what happened from the innkeeper's perspective of all this clatter and his family and everything like that. And, you know, the shepherds in the end, it's, you know, (laughs) I'm not going to give it away, but it parallels the original poem, but it's the prequel. This is the night before the the very first first Christmas. Christmas. And we bring the story back to the true meaning of Christmas. We bring the story back focusing on the birth of Jesus Christ. So this honors Clement Clark more because I think it would be a poem that he would write in his style now to bring it back as the prequel, as the prequel to it. Like that was, that happened, that his original poem happened in 1800s. Now we're going back to the first Christmas, right? Right. So this is, this is fun. And we have Mark Heron, who's an accomplished artist and he has done an amazing job. Just the fun. Yeah. It's classically yeah. illustrated, but it's also got this cartoon style to it so that the kids, you know, see see the, the people getting excited and all the different animals with their big eyes. And it's it's beautifully, beautifully illustrated. And it's just a lot of fun. And what this is doing, I want to put this in the hands of parents and grandparents. OK, well, right now it's 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 the ebook, right? We're, 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 we're working on getting the hardcover book, but kids nowadays, they want the iPad and they want to see it on the phone and stuff like that anyways. But I want to get this, I want to get this into the hands of parents and grandparents so that they can take the, that poem and redeem the intent of that original poem. Talk about right in the front, talk about the man who wrote it. And then he was, that was just a little bit of fun about St. Nicholas. But what he was focused on on Christmas morning was this poem. Yeah, well, you know what you're saying is it's what I'm hearing you say. And this, in my opinion, trumps the other two books. It ought to, it, they're wonderful. And I've seen the, the graphics on them. They're beautiful books. But what this does is it allows parents to teach children using the fun poetic language of Clement Clark Moore and and but retell faithfully the first advent of Jesus Christ. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. it's in that language, and so it's not in King James, but it's in that. What was the clatter? And it's these shepherds, and I can imagine these shepherds. They go and you know, and they're like, they're they're not going to be quiet. Hey, let's not wake anybody up. They're too excited about what's going on. Exactly. So, they're race. They're racing on. There's pictures of them racing on their camels because yeah. once they heard the the heavenly vision and had that yeah. and they they said you'll find him in the manger i mean off they went you know <laughs> just just gone in the middle of the night to go and so imagine they got there the commotion and the, oh. the clatter was amazing right everybody just excited this is the yeah. messiah that they were waiting for yeah, yeah. Come to the manger and man this th- this story it was it's so Amazing that when when I felt the Spirit of God inspire me to write this, how the original story lined up with the story of the poem, lined up with the structure yeah, yeah, of the original poem, yeah. just just amazing. And wow. Mark, Mark, you know he's he's such a creative guy, and he just is so much fun. And and yeah, you can tell I'm excited about yeah, this with good this reason. Book. It needs to be out there. And listen, I'm going to invite the folks that know me. Listen, you know it's not. It's a very inexpensive proposition. I'm not sure what it's going to sell for exactly on Amazon, but I would say get that for as many grandkids or children as you can. But number one, but number two, this isn't about selling a book for a few dollars. This is much more than that. This is about taking back Christmas in the hearts and the minds of the upcoming generation, because if if they lose Christmas, we lose the gospel in this country. They, you cannot lose the message of Christ. And if we let that happen in a single generation, that is a horrible travesty. And here's a simple way in a highly illustrated, uh, basically Disney-esque uh, uh, quality. Only I happen to know Mark here, and I think he's the finest graphic artist alive. He's done many of my books. 
Uh, and I know him personally. He does a phenomenal job. He prays over everything he does. It's it's extremely well done. And this is to help us hold on to and reclaim the celebration of Jesus Christ and what it really means for Christmas Day. So listen, if you're watching me, go to, where do they go to get this, Rick? What's the best place to get this book? Operation TakeBackChristmas.com. Right. Operation TakeBackChristmas.com. And that's what I want to do. And I, I, I'm so glad you're having me on here. And, and I'm hoping that everybody on here goes and buys a copy for every kid and grandkid and <laughs> that they need. So that what happens is on Amazon, it starts to get noticed and other people start yeah. to buy it. And we start making this movement of yeah. helping kids. Because right now we, we tend to, even in Christian homes, not everybody, but we tend to talk about Santa Claus and we talk about Jesus. But we tend to make the Santa Claus part more fun and the Jesus part, not so much. And the, our kids don't understand the history of where the two came from. And this book helps to put that all together so they can say, okay, that's a bit of fun, but this is the true meaning. And this is where we need to camp. Yeah. So it really isn't your, I love the way you said that it isn't just about a book. It's about taking back Christmas. So if everybody goes and starts getting this spreading yeah. this word, getting these books out there into more hands, then we grow up a generation that understands the difference between what is what is just a bit of fun and Saint, what was St. Nicholas Day and who St. Nicholas was and what is really important. And who better, whose life better to say that with than Clement Clark Moore, whose poem has been used to pull people away instead of put it all together. So I'm going to ask everybody watching this, listen, go there, go to Operation Take Back Christmas. Is that all one word, by the way? Or is it a hyphen? It is all, all one word. word. You have no Operation no Take Back Christmas. Okay, dot com. Go there. If they want to purchase it, will that direct them over to the Amazon site or how does that work? That's exactly it. It'll pick them over to the Amazon site. But here's what we got. It will also talk to them about bonuses we have right now, too. Because ah. <laughs> what we're going to do, yeah. and this is really great because we want everybody getting involved. Is that did you know that one of the best, uh, several of the best selling Christmas books on Amazon right now are Christmas coloring books, right? Okay. People want to put physical printed copies of Christmas yes, pictures yes, yes. in their kids so their kids, you know, they can start to talk to their kids about what Christmas is really about and have them actually engage with coloring the pictures. So Mark put together a coloring book of some of the artwork from this book. It's really great. So this this would be a coloring book. You you it's an ebook e coloring book. So you can print it off your printer, and then give it to your kids to color while they're while they're, you know, getting ready for Christmas yeah, or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. while you're talking about the Christmas story. So this is a wonderful bonus that's not on Amazon, but that we're going to give everybody who goes and buys the book wow. as well. And this is so cool. We have what we're calling a read along party. Okay. Uh -huh. How okay. many kids get to meet an author or an illustrator of one of their favorite books? Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. What we're going to do is for those who, who buy the book over the next couple of weeks, they get to sign up for a party we're having on December 16th, Saturday, December 16th, where they get to tune into a Zoom and hear me talk about the story and talk about the message of Jesus hear Mark get on there and Mark's going to even show them, give them some tips as to how to draw one of the wonderful, lovable animal characters, right? So this is going to be great and interactive. And plus, which we have one of the beloved voices of Christian radio, Rick Tarrant. Oh my gosh. When, you, so yeah, when you hear, when you hear his resume, I mean, when you hear his voice, <laughs> yeah. he's the voice of Christian radio kind of thing. He's going to come in on that morning and he is going to read the book to the kids. So wow. they get to they get to be introduced to the author and the illustrator, and they get to hear the book being read to them. So we're doing this so that, again, we're helping get the word out. We're helping to get these kids to have an experience that they remember, that lodges in them, that says, hey, this is about, I remember being there with the author and the illustrator, I remember hearing the story. I remember hearing them talk about how important it was to keep Jesus the reason for the season. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, Rick, I think that's great. So if you're watching this video, I'm saying go to Operation TakeBackChristmas.com and get the book. Because if we can get uh, 
a lot of folks getting it on Amazon. I don't know what the price is going to be, but it's not going to be. It's. Do you have any idea what it's going to be, Rick? On that? Yeah, the ebook. The ebook is the ebook is nine ninety seven, but we're going to for the first couple of weeks we're putting it on for seven ninety seven. So this is this the ebook, and it's not just it's not just a few pages. This is over fifty pages. This oh, is yeah. a lot of artwork and a lot of thought and a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful book. So yeah, seven. Yeah. 97 you can buy a copy for even if you have 50 grandkids you can buy a copy for every one of them <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. so anyway i think that's great so listen rick thank you so much for doing that thank you for your love for jesus thank you for the excellent witness you are in the world in the marketplace we didn't even talk about the bible that you did that, that illustrated the greatest story ever told or uh, the, what's the proper name of that what's the proper name of that most important story ever told yeah. most important story ever told which that one has been in print now and you've got what is it? Over a hundred million copies of that one in print. So we didn't even That's mention right. that one. I mean, Rick is a call by God to do this kind of stuff. That's why his books have sold and multiplied millions upon millions of copies. This one will be just like it. Get yours now.